Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mean Brews. I hope everybody had a happy new year and a great Christmas. Um, getting right back into the recipe analysis. So here we go, Vienna Lager. I had uh, 35 winning Vienna Lager recipes. We had two that were best of show, 21 gold, uh, six silver, and five bronze. Uh, the BJCP style is 7A. Uh, the description is a moderate strength amber lager with a soft, smooth maltiness and moderate bitterness, yet finishing relatively dry. The malt flavor is clean, bready, rich, and somewhat toasty, with an elegant impression derived from the quality-based malts and process, and not from specialty malts and adjuncts. We'll see if that correlates to the recipes that win. Um, hint there. Um, so as far as uh, style evolution, we're seeing a little bit of evolution over time, um, mainly around the malts used and the hops used, um, and a little bit of variation between recipe, but not a lot. It kind of trends with each other, uh, the recipes. Original gravity, um, anywhere between 1.045 and 1.065. The average was 1.052. And I plan to stick right on that average, so no, no movement there. Um, IBUs were anywhere between 18 and 31, with an average of 25. And I will be a little bit high, 26 I think is what I'm shooting for here. And the reason is we're seeing a change in the bitterness unit over gravity unit ratio. Uh, that's increasing with time due to the Lublin shift. And so I'm going to reflect that with my recipe. Um, the SRM, the color, uh, BJCP range is pretty strict between 9 and 15, but we had a recipe go all the way up to 25. Um, I plan to be right at the mean, which is about 12.5 with my recipe. Um, with, uh, with respect to the malts that are used for this style, 91.5% um, of their grist is base malt, about 6% crystal, about 2% toast, that should be toast, not toast, and about 1% roast. Um, when you look at the propensity of malt styles used, um, we have right between about 77 and 100% of the grist were base malts, um, nothing less than 77. Um, I'll get into these in the next slide. I plan to be just, just under at about 90% of the grist with uh, base malts. Uh, zooming in on those specialty malts. Uh, next most prominent is a crystal malt. Um, around Right around 70% of the recipes use crystal malts. Right around 55, 56% use roast. And a little above 40 use toast. So this doesn't correlate to the PJCP description at all. Where it says you have very few, uh, if any, uh, toast and roast malts. Um, what I plan to use is we use crystal malts, but it'll be on the low side around 5% um, and about 1% for um, uh, roasted malts. And I'm going to use around the average about 4% or 4.1% of toast malts. Um, we're seeing a decrease in the use of toasted malts over time. I'll show you why in a second why I think this is. I, 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 well, I'll tell you now. Um, most of these early recipes where there's a high usage of biscuits or aromatic malts was was pretty much because they couldn't get their hands on Vienna malt. So they're trying to replicate that flavor by using Pilsner and a toasted malt. Um, and less and less nowadays people are using toast malts. I will be in my recipe, um, and there's a reason why I'll show you at the end. Um, base malts, the most prominent uh, Vienna malt is the namesake. 83% of the recipes used Vienna malt. And an average of about 55% of the grist. Pilsner, the next most common, 77% of the recipes. At an average of 40.1% of the grist. Uh, and then Munich, 66% of the recipes use Munich. Big proportion use Munich. At an average of about 20% of the grist. Um, also, we had a couple recipes, less than 10% use a wheat malt. One recipe each using Maris Otter and one uh, a rye malt. Um, I will be using uh, right at uh, around 50% Vienna, 20% uh, um, Pilsner, and 20% Munich in my recipe. Uh, we are seeing, this is what I was talking about before, those early recipes used no Vienna and all Pilsner malts with specialty malts, and we've seen that flip as malts become more and more available nowadays, which makes complete sense. Um, crystal malts, um, the most prominent was a medium crystal or a Karamunic 1, 2, or 3. 40% uh, of the recipes use uh, medium crystal at about 6% of the grist. Uh, the only other one worth mentioning, light crystal, a third of the recipes use light crystal at an average of 6.4. 
and I'll be using about 5%. Medium crystal or Karamutic 2, I believe, in my recipe. Toast and roast malts, uh, Carafa 1, 2, 3, or chocolate, or spe Carafa Special. 46% of the recipes use uh, chocolate or Carafa malt, an average of 1.37. And uh, I'm going to be at about 1, or a little bit under that uh, that number. Um, there, This is the melanoid curve, and... I plan to use the melanoid malt in my uh, recipe. Um, when it came to the decoction, I'll talk about this when we get to the mash. Um, I don't plan to do a decoction here, but there was enough data to support that enough recipes or enough proportion of the recipes used either a melanoid or a decoction to get those those toasty type flavors that you can only get that way. Um, so I will be including the melanoid malt in my recipe at the end. Bittering hops, we had 14 different bittering hops used. Uh, Howler Middle Fruit, the most prominent, followed by Magnum, Tet, Herzbrucker, and a bunch of others. I uh, plan to use Magnum instead of Howler, and the reason is, seeing a convergence here between Tet, Magnum, and Bitter, they're all equally used uh, nowadays. Now that Magnum's available, it's just easier to use as a bittering hop, because you use less hop matter, and less hop matter in the kettle is better, in my opinion. Uh, flavor hops used, we had uh, six recipes used flavor hops, Howler Middle Fruit, Sots, Tet, Herzbrecker, and some others. I will not be using a flavor hop edition. Uh, Roma hops, again, six were used, Howler Middle Fruit, Tet, Sots, Herzbrecker, Cascade, and Select. And I will be using a Howler Middle Fruit. Um, when you look at the hop rates, 60% uh, of the recipes use a flavor hop and 43 used an aroma hop. Um, the flavor hops were used at 0.14 ounces per gallon, and the aroma hops at 0.11. Uh, the metric units are over here as well. Big range, you know, if you look at 0.025 ounce per gallon up to 0.35. Order of magnitude difference between the high and the low here. Pretty prominent. Um, we are seeing, I am going to use a aroma hop. I'm actually splitting the difference. I'm going to put a 10 minute addition because uh, we're seeing this uh, kind of converge where Flavor hop usage is going down and aroma hops going up uh, to the point where people are putting them in as late as possible um, just to, you know, putting in a bittering charge and then uh, something at the end to get the aroma. Uh, so not a lot of hop flavor. So I'm going to try to shoot the middle here and go at 10 minutes and put my uh, single uh, hop at that addition. Uh, aroma hop rates are increasing a little bit over time um, to around 0 0.12, 0 0.13 ounce per gallon. Looking at the mash type, talking about this again, um, we had about 60% uh, of the recipes used a single infusion, and then uh, 17 and 23% using decoction and step mashes. When you look at this, and I didn't present this, but when I went back and compared, you know, where was melanoin used, um, and there was enough usage of melanoin in the step and infusion mashes to to really warrant that 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 type of flavor needs to be in this style. So instead of you know, putting a complicated decoction in here, which I have done on some of the recipes. I'm just going to include in my recipe some melanoid malt. And I will be doing a single infusion mash. Uh, looking at the mash rests, there were you know, two different rests that people used. The beta, somebody did the Hulkers, uh, about 25% did the Hulkers mash, which is a, a beta rest and a uh, alpha rest to try to get maximum fermentability. Uh, wasn't enough to really warrant doing the step mash here or a decoction. Um, big range on the, the sacrification rest between 145 and 162. The average is 154 Fahrenheit or 68 Celsius for an average of an hour. Um, I'm going to be right at 154 uh, for my recipe. Looking at the boil duration, uh, anywhere between 60 and 90 minutes. Um, I'm The average was 75. I'm going to stick with that. Um, the, my Pilsner malt usage is pretty low, so I'm not worried too much about DMS or DMS precursors. And with today's malts, I don't think a 90-minute boil is really necessary, unless you need to reduce the volume. Um, yeast used, the most prominent was 3470, followed by Eyinger, WS308, um, another German lager yeast, and the Oktoberfest strain, uh, Weinstefan 206. Some others used here. This is an ale yeast, I believe, which was... Uh, used in some of the older recipes. And I plan to stick with 3470. And uh, we're seeing an increase in the use of 3470 over time. So 
this is more and more becoming even a couple of years where only though that yeast was used in a couple of years. So this is definitely the strain to use for this style. Uh, water chemistry, um, kind of all over the map here. Um, I'm planning to shoot for about 30 parts per million uh, uh, calcium on the low end of magnesium and right on the average of 19 parts per million uh, sodium, 53 sulfate, and 50 was a 51 uh, chlorides. So really a balanced water profile. Um, I plan to get my, my calcium from the mash, so um, that's why I'm okay with this being a little low. Fermentation temps running between 38 and 65. Um, I had a question in, on YouTube the other day, really recently, about really are there no lager recipes out there that ferment at a pressure at high temperature? This is the first one that I've seen. So there was one recipe using 838 that fermented at pressure that won a metal. I don't remember which metal it won, but it, it is in my data set. So we are starting to see pressurized fermentation show up. Um, as it gets more prominently used nowadays. Um, we say more and more, we have one. So it'll be interesting to see how this trends in the future. Um, when it comes to the entire data sweep, um, the average temperature was right at 49.7, about 50, or 9.8 Celsius. Um, looking at the, the most prominent strains used, um, right around the 40s, high 40s, low 50s, no surprise here. Uh, I plan to use the 830 right at 50 degrees, which is right at its its mean. Um, other variables, carbonation volumes was 2.42, and the average mash pH was 5.25. Now on to the recipe. Um, repeating what I said before, 50% of um, Vienna malt from Weirman, 20% of Munich 1, or sub in your a light Munich malt here, not a dark, 20% uh, Pilsner malt, 5% Karamunic 2 or Crystal 60 or whatever you can find. Um, I'm going to add that 4% melanoidin. And then whatever percentage of your chocolate malt here, I'm at 1% 1% of Carafal Special 3. That's my favorite of the of the Carafal malts. 1% um, Carafal Special 3 just to get the color that I'm looking for. I'm going to bitter with about 23 IBUs of Magnum at 60 minutes. And I'm splitting the difference between the flavor and aroma hops. 10 minute addition at about 0.13 ounce per gallon of Haller Middle Fruit. And my yeast is going to be uh, Y yeast 2124. Uh, again, this recipe can be purchased at Bacchus and Barleycorn. Link will be in the description. Uh, as for my uh, original gravity, I'm going to shoot for 1.052 and 27 IBUs. Again, my water chemistry 31 parts per million calcium, 5 magnesium. 19 sodium, 51 chloride, 53 sulfate, and the bicarbonates from the water that I use. Uh, I'm shooting for a mash pH of 5.25. And uh, I'm going to do an infusion mash of 154 for 60 minutes. Mash out, sparge, and boil. I know this is 60 minutes, but I am going to do a 75 minute boil for this recipe. Chill it to 48 Fahrenheit or about 9 Celsius. Oxygenate and pitch a 0 0.8 liters per gallon starter of white labs 830 that's pretty big that's uh, i think four liters per gallon so a four liter starter in a five gallon batch um for a minute at 50 or 10 celsius and when it when it gets five points from the final gravity or if you've got a tilt if you start seeing that knee in the curve or that bend in the curve raise the temperature up to do a diacetyl rest while it's still in active fermentation so raise it up to about 60 um, uh, or 15.6 celsius and hold there till it's finished then I'm going to transfer to a bottle keg and carbonate to 2.4 volumes of CO2. And I'm going to lager for 34, 34 Fahrenheit or 1.1 Celsius. I didn't present this data, but the average was 43 days of lagering for this style. All right, that's it. And uh, thanks for tuning in. The next uh, video is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be on January 30th. Um, we're going to do a live stream from our homebrewing club here in Katy. Uh, I'm going to present on Irish Stout, um, and it's going to be a live stream. Tune in. You probably can ask some questions, and I'll have somebody there that can uh, relay those questions to me as I'm doing the presentation or at the end of the presentation. So it'll be almost a Q&A here, uh, but we'll, we'll walk through the same data for an Irish Stout. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on January 30th. Bye-bye.